Welcome everybody to today's edition of uh, Stunt Hanger Around the Bench, so to speak. Yesterday I uh, explained to you about the brace that goes on the bell crank and I thought that I would uh, show that today. This is the most important part right here to keep from pulling your bell crank out. And it goes in between the fuselage side, top and bottom, on the bell crank pivot post. And you simply take a piece of plywood and cut it to fit snugly between the two sides. And then mark the hole where the pivot point goes and we're going to glue that down. I mean it's not really a uh, you know a stunning procedure or anything you know exciting procedure but in order to keep from from pulling the bell crank out I feel it's rather important and <clears throat> what I normally do this is five minutes epoxy uh, just about everything I work with is five minute epoxy I don't go for you know 30 minute or hour or whatever and that's entirely up to you but I use all five minutes and mix that up real good and liberal amount of epoxy on this piece here this will ensure that you're not in an embarrassing moment while you're pulling your airplane at the nets and you hear point. And the bell crank is slid over three rib bays. You do it my way, that'll never happen. Never, never happen. Impossible. A little tricky I've got it cut pretty close here come on now what I'm gonna do Wendy calls it babysitting I call it just holding <laughs> but I'm gonna push it down and wipe out any wipe off any of the excess epoxy and the reason for that is it, it, well it's basically personal preference but The next thing I'm going to show you after this, and I've shown it before in some of my other films, is the super fill that goes inside the fuselage. What we're trying to do is unitize everything as one. And the super fill goes inside the fuselage, the fillet inside the fuselage. And then when you put one out, that means that the fuselage becomes one with the wing. I sure hope you're enjoying my building videos. Make sure you like and subscribe. I'm only 67 subscribers away from the 500 point, so we can get that stupid URL changed over to Stunhanger. That's our first milestone. And then there's 500 subscribers more to go after that, so we can go after Tower Hobby and, and some of the bigger sponsors. I intend to make this work somehow, one video per day. When I'm done, when this one's dry, I'll turn it over and we'll do the other side. 
But I'll go ahead and edit out some of this wait time. When this is done, you can go ahead and cut off the top. There's about a quarter of an inch of piano wire sticking up through the plywood. You can cut that off. It really serves no purpose. Or you can leave it. You just need to make sure you get this piece. Glued in. It'll be a sad day at the Nationals when your bell crank pulls out. After looking at this front end, we're going to change up. I'm going to make it a side loader. I wasn't going to, but the side loader just makes sense, even more so than the top loader. Of course the bottom, the bottom is still removable, so we can get out our electronics. We'll put that down below the battery box, which they all are anyway. Okay, we have that installed. Let's flip it over and do the other side. Here's my other piece already cut. Hopefully it's the same size on the other side because I cut them both the same. I didn't measure. That looks pretty good. I just use the uh, Jim Lee hand drills. You notice I have his hat on. That's a plug for you, Jim. These are about seven bucks a piece, and I have every size. But I'll tell you what, it's, they're so worth it. You don't want to root for the drill and do all that crazy stuff. I want this to sit down flush on the wing so I added the small dimple in it. still doesn't sit down flush so we want to relieve some of the uh, dope and glue and silk fan that's gathered up here. Well, pretty close, a little bit more. That's good, right there. Now, <clears throat> mix up the next batch of epoxy. I'm 
you'll notice I have my favorite my favorite epoxy mixing tool at least the Academy of multi rotor Darfs sends me something useful every month This takes, you know, so we spend a half an hour with this. It, it's just so important. I just can't explain how important this step is. And if you leave it out, especially on wings like I built, you know, the millennial bean wing. And, you know, go back and check that video. There's not much of a spar in that. It's eight inch balsa wood. And if you just do this, it would pull out of that wing like it was nothing. At least this wing has light fly bars. When I look at somebody's airplane, and I don't see that they've wiped the glue joint, kind of like a plumber. When a plumber looks at his comp competition's work, if you haven't wiped the solder joints, you didn't do your job right. So, Clean up all the excess glue. There's no reason to tote that around. It looks terrible. All airplanes have a shelf life, meaning that it's going to crash sooner or later anyway. Whether you want to hear that or not. Uh, and when it does, you don't want a guy like me looking inside going, Oh, look what you did, you didn't sand inside or whatever. And yes, this will get sanded. This is 3 now. When I put the outside shape on, it will get sanded to 16 inch back inside there. So we'll remove all that extra weight behind the center of gravity. But now it's a matter of unitizing everything today. I see in the nose here, I have about, oh, 3 16 gap between F1 and this F2. F2 and the leading edge. We're gonna build a, uh, a facade or soffit over to it. To more tie everything together because if you have two pieces that are you know inches apart they're not doing any good you know you're just carrying around dead weight if you're going to have two pieces together make sure they at least touch each other that way they're offering some kind of support to each other Holding it down. And oh, no. and I'm gonna tell you, I, I know that you could pull a hundred pounds with this. I know that you could pull a hundred and fifty pounds with this if the line would hold up. But this bell crank is not going to pull out.
like that. Got it. I think in the next segment, in the next part of this video, we will uh, make up a push rod. Well, at least get it drying, get it, get it ready to go. I'm going to try one of Tom's new style push rods. They're smaller, and instead of the titanium ends, they're just threaded all thread 440. So we're going to try that. It's it's a few grams lighter. It was a lot cheaper. So we'll give that a try. You know, I'm I'm all for trying new stuff. If I think it will, you know, going to be all right. I think when I make this box, I might take F2 out of this airplane. And just make that box tie into the leading edge. That's probably what I'm going to do. Then F, F1 here is going to be removed as well, but we'll tie into that box. So I got, I got some changing up to do. Okay, that, that's good enough. The nice thing about the epoxy mixing station, when you're done, you got a fresh sheet. So, on to the push rods. 